Alrighty, it's your boy Benvolio with uh, another Lizardman build. This time things went a little better for old Crocgar and his faithful Carnosaur, Grimlock, the mashup of many theropods. Um, yeah, so I brought a, uh, another Lizardman army, tweaked it a couple times, uh, a couple more times, um, and I'm fighting the dwarves um, being played by a player called Punisher. Yeah, Punisher, pretty edgy boy there. Um, so he's across the map uh, on one of those hills. We'll get to him in a minute, but let's first let's take a quick look at what I'm bringing here. So we're starting over on my uh, right flank with uh, okay my favorites, the Pterodon Riders, Fire Leech Bolas. Actually managed to do use their Death from Above ability, dropping rocks on uh, infantry this game, and they were they were terribly useful um, against the Dwarf Warriors um, in this match. So I've got one group of them on this flank and another uh, on my um, far right flank. I'm on my left flank right now at the moment. I have Krokgar mounted on Grimlock again. Um, no Hand of the Gods this time, just standard abilities including Swiftness of Itzel, that explosion speedy burst spell. Look at him sitting up there on his dinosaur. Yeah, he's ready to kick some A. I've got Cold One Spear Riders again. Brought these guys again. Um, you know, armor to shield it, armor piercing, anti-large. Brought them again for that flanking game along with the Pterodons. So I've got them parked with Krokgar, which I'm not using as an anchor. I'm using him on the flank, moving him with the cavalry this time. I thought that would be a better idea, and it didn't, it didn't end up working quite well. So they're hiding in that clump of trees over there on my left flank. Um, my main army, I totally done away with uh, the red-crested skinks and the skink skirmishers. I brought Saurus instead. Uh, Saurus warriors with shields and their club infantry, no spears this time. Uh, I didn't bring the spears because the spears are anti-large, and I saw he was playing against dwarves, and, well, they're dwarves. They're all small, so you don't really have to worry so much about anti-large, maybe against gyrocopters, but there's more effective answers to gyrocopters, like my pterodons, for example. So I've got two groups of Saurus warriors uh, with shields and clubs um, replacing the red-crested skinks. So these guys are just a bit beefier and got a bit more staying power in combat, and the shields are going to help them against missile, uh, missile, um, missile attacks. So I've got one group of temple guards. Uh, okay, same uh, elite infantry, armored and shielded, armor piercing, charge defense against large foes. Not too useful here, but just their basic uh, melee stats are going to be useful against the dwarves here. I've got the star chamber guardians um, also hiding in the woods. Um, they're at a regiment of renown, uh, temple guard unit, armored and shielded, armor piercing, charge defense against all predatory senses. Just a high stat line, um, high leadership. You're going to provide some real staying power against the dwarven infantry. Um, and the other group of Saurus Warriors with shields here. I want to kind of keep them hidden in the bush for a while. You'll see why. Um, and I've got the group of Salamanders again. Um, slightly more effective this time. But again, they, they did that thing where they routed out and I forgot about them again. Oh, he's oi oi. But uh, didn't, uh, didn't hurt me too much this time. And I got my Skink Chief with that wardrobe of Zautek again. Um, able to kind of hang back and use his little blowgun to shoot, uh, shoot from the... Uh, shoot from the uh, the rear um, and then over here I've got another group of cold one spear riders and pterodon riders the fire leech bolas so and uh, let's take a look quickly at his army he's set up uh, on this hill nice choice with this big rock face right behind him he's arrayed his ranged units on the slope uh, higher above his infantry very clever move he's gonna get better line of sight better shots down into my infantry as they advance so he's got three groups of these thunderers Okay, they are um, ar armored and shielded piercing missiles, and they're decently combatants. They're going to do decently against uh, melee infantry. Not perfect, but they're pretty good, and those um, those armor piercing missiles are going to be pretty nasty. They fire in a straight line, though, so he's got to maintain decent line of sight on me. Um, he's got dwarf warriors. He's got about f five groups of dwarf warriors. Uh, they're all standard level, so we went for a wide build, just a nice big wide build with all these Dwarven Warriors here at the base of the hill, kind of um, providing that line for the uh, in uh, missile infantry to fire from behind. Dwarf Warriors with great weapons. Um, over here, um, sort of in the middle, I guess, but they've got that armor-piercing ability, so they're Dwarf Warriors. No, not shields, but uh, they do have um, armor-piercing abilities, so they're going to be a bit weaker to range weapons, but they're going to be good against armored units. Um, two groups of them, the um, Dwarf Warriors, Great Weapons, excuse me, and then one group of Longbeards, Armored and shiel Shielded Charge Defense against Large Foes, so going to be against, good against Krokgar and Grimlock, and they're old Grumblers, so they got high leadership, and they also uh, kind of positively buff the leadership of those around them, if I'm not mistaken, so they're nasty, uh, so I'm going to want um, my Temple Guard on them as much as possible. Behind that, he's got a group of Slayers, these are crazy little Dwarves, 
Yep, they're shirtless. They're hairy. They're shirtless, hairy little men. Um, that uh, their whole quest in life is to find a, um, an adversary worthy of um, dying against in battle. So they will fight to the last model. They won't run off because that's uh, basically unbreakable, I think, as far as I know. But yeah, they're going to fight until they die. Um, I mean, just psychology, all that stuff. I'm pretty sure. Um, that's kind of like their lore stuff anyway. And he's got his lord back here, Thorgrim Grudge, Grudge Bear, sitting on this... Um, magical dwarven throne being carried by some long beards uh, so he's an armored and a melee expert so he's gonna do really good in melee um, yeah looks like he might be advancing there a bit of it it's a bit higher up on the slope and he's got two cannons two dino killer cannons here cause so they are armor piercing and anti-large um, so I'm immediately aware of them and I don't want to present them with any targets so I'm hiding my troops in the bush you can see my banners now but because I'm in the bush, he won't be able to see him, so I'm not presenting him any targets. I want to be very wary about that. Um, so he's got two groups of those cannons. And over here, finally, he's got a group of Iron Drakes, armored anti and anti-infantry. They're basically dwarves with flamethrowers. So those those little cannon things, they're going to shoot out jets of flame. Ooh, they're leaking a bit of magma there. Ouch, chihuahua. So that's going to be really nasty against any infantry he can line up uh, shots on. So I'm going to want to make sure I try and delete them before you can take too many shots into my Saurus, because they'll delete plenty of Sauruses with that uh, flamethrower ranged attack. So let's get uh, let's get things going. So, noticing that, um, that he's, and he also quite outnumbers me, he's just got a lot more units. Oh, and uh, one more thing. He's got a gyro bomber here. It's a gyro bomber, armored, armor piercing missiles, anti-infantry death from above, which means you can drop bombs. You can see he's got kind of bombs. Hanging out in there, we're just gonna be able to drop on, um, drop on my troops. I don't know if he gets a chance because I think my pterodons kind of bully him out enough, but that's also what he's rocking. So that's his army. It's pretty wide build against my uh, smaller elite build. So I'm seeing this, and I don't want to bring these guys. So he's got this great open patch just to lay in with his thunderers and ranged uh, cannon against any troops to send out against that. So my first move is going to be make it move Krokgar and the Spear One Riders um, where you can see them. I'm going to move and make them aware that they're over here. And um, they're the only thing he's seen yet, so it's going to force him to kind of reposition. Um, not going to get all that firepower pointing in the same direction. It's going to be the idea as I bring up the cavalry and uh, pterodons on the other flank as well. Um, so that's going to hopefully force him to reposition. We have to see if he takes the bait. And over here on the other flank, I am doing the same. Let's turn off the info card, sorry. Um, so that that's the start there. You can kind of see it on the mini map here. And uh, but I'm with the rest of my, my main force. I'm just waiting because I want to make sure that his troops are getting divided. And it looks like he's taking the bait. He's repositioning his thunderers and his cannon uh, up on this um, side of the hill. And that's pretty good. He's playing pretty conservatively like that's the dwarves are really good for kind of defensive battles because they got good leadership and they're not very fast so it really is best to just find a good hill and you know um, set down roots on it you know with a solid line of um, you know solid line of infantry and uh, ranged behind it you want to bait your uh, troop bait your enemy into coming into you he's not gonna get off the hill so I have to take it to him so but that means the most effective thing I can do is divide his attention and come at him from as many directions um, as possible, which is what I'm going to try and do here. So I'm just hanging back here with um, Krokgar and my cavalry and the Pterodons. Um, now I'm moving across uh, my infantry from the forest. Now that he's repositioned his thunderers and his cannons, he's not going to be able to... Uh, it worked perfectly. My little my little ploy there worked very nicely because now he's not going to be able to bring that artillery to bear on my um, infantry. Um, which, even though it's anti-large, would have been pretty effective. So, you know, uh, marching up everything with that uh, Skink Chief with his Wardrum of Zyotech buffing their leadership. And I think their speed as well. Uh, yeah, it's giving them a buff in speed and leadership. So I'm um, advancing infantry, going to try and... I have basically gave them attack commands, so I don't have to think about that too much. They're going to move across and immediately engage his, his infantry. I'm moving in on his flank to keep his attention divided. Moving in on his left flank with my right flank. Uh, I'm going to charge in the spear riders. Would have made a lot more sense, I think, to uh, try and wheel them around and get a rear charge in because these do have charge defense against... Uh, Charge defense against my cavalry, so I don't get much of a charge bonus off against them. However, the Fire Leech Bowlers are pretty good at disrupting their uh, formation. Here's the charge. 
Yeah, as you can see, the dwarves don't get moved by it too much. They're really stubborn little, stubborn little guys. Let's see, and over here, haven't moved out with Krokgar yet. He's still hiding back there. Oh, no, starting to, starting to. Uh, the salamanders firing in. Um, yeah, doing a little bit of damage. Maybe not as much as I would have liked, but that's decent. Oh, and the gyro, cop, gyro bomber firing in. I think I gave them an attack command on the gyro bomber at one point. Not the best idea. Yeah, I do, but it's not very effective. Yeah, it's like that Pokemon thing, not very effective. So pulling out with the cavalry, going to go in for a cycle charge. Coming in again, I think I'm going to try and drop some rocks on these Dwarvies. Dropping rocks, dropping rocks, dropping rocks, dropping rocks, dropping rocks, drop some rocks. No, didn't drop any rocks. Looking for a better opportunity to drop some rocks on them. Um, yep, here comes Krokgar. Maybe the rock's dropping out. Yeah, dropping some rocks on his dwarves. Didn't do too much, but still disrupting a bit. Fire Leash Bull is getting fired in. Here comes Krokgar charging into the infantry. Good, getting a nice boom. And the Iron Drakes are hitting me. Swift as a bit still, and a nice explosion scattering his troops everywhere as the infantry prepares to close. The Salamanders firing against the Thunderers who are putting, giving back what they're taking. They're grinding them down quite nicely. But here comes the infantry engagement, the Temple Guard. Coming into the Longbeards here up the hill. The Longbeards are going to have that uphill advantage, but the Temple Guard should still be able to hold off nicely. The cavalry charging in as well, disrupting their formation a bit. Uh, Salamanders still firing now against the Slayers. Maybe not the best choice because they're armor piercing. Slayers have no armor, so it's kind of wasted. The Saurus Warriors about to close with the Dwarf Warriors with Great Weapons, which is good because they are not armored, so that's negating any benefit they're going to get from those Great Axes. Charging there. Over there, the Star Chamber Guardians have charged collided with the two central groups of horse. Look at those glowing weapons just wheeling around, so doing well already. Um, and another group of Saurus, so the infantry has collided. The Fire Leash Bro is still firing in. Moving out the Cold One Riders, I'm going to try and bring them into the Thunderers around in the real rear line. So let's check his right flank, my left flank. So one group of cannons already routed, just kind of overrun already. Um, managed to negate their usefulness. He might have got a couple shots off against uh, Krokgar, but that's it. Uh, Krokgar getting stuck in with the Slayer is not an ideal situation for him, though. I think he's going to want to go after those Thunderers, but those Slayers are going to... Uh, they have an anti-large bonus, so they're going to be the best thing he's got to throw against Krokgar, especially if he can isolate him. The Temple Guard doing quite well against the Longbeards, as far as I can tell, with the support of the Pterodons, who are bullying the Gyrocopter now. Uh, instead of firing, but yeah, but that's good. Get that out of the way. So the Pterodon's pulling the Gyrocopter. The Saurus Warrior's doing okay. The Skink Chief firing in, and the Salamander's routed in. There they will remain. <laughs> there they will remain. They were routed by the Thunderers. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, Krokgar, Grimlock into the Thunderers. Great, and the Cold One Riders coming into the Thunderers as well. Bit of a delayed charge. Don't know what's going on there. Uh, where are my other group of Cold One Riders? I think they must have routed off. Oh no, there they are. Um, kind of stomping the Iron Drakes, which is a good place for them to be. A Temple Guard. Okay, yeah, yeah. So trading pretty well, pretty effectively, despite being outnumbered. Okay, getting Fire Leech Bullets into those Dwarf Warriors. Great shot, great shot, great shot. Star Chamber Guardians trading decently with the Dwarf Warriors, but getting whittled down. Thorgrim Grudge Bear coming in, ramming people on his podium. Okay, Krokgar surrounded by the Thunder is in a nice position. Those aren't going to be terribly effective, especially in melee against uh, a big giant dinosaur, but he's trying to bring those Iron Drakes to bear, I think. Um, Cold One Riders against the Slayers, not ideal. They're going to rampage and probably get chopped up by the Slayers, and that's probably going to be the end of them. However, the Temple Guards are forcing off the Longbeards, grinding down the Longbeards. That's a good trade there. Saurus Warriors against the Great Weapons doing okay, but there are two groups. The Skink Chief still managed to fire in. If I'd only brought my Salamanders in, that would have been very effective. Uh, I think I got some rocks dropped there, but we kind of missed that, unfortunately, with the one group of Pterodons. But now they're just raining fire down on this clump of um, Dwarf Warriors. Just really ideal for those Fire Leash Bullas. Just to boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. And the Saurus Warriors really being a good investment here. Despite being fewer of them, they're just holding out, taking so much longer to grind down, and making the Dwarf Warriors bunch up perfect for those Fire Leash Bullas to fire in. Krokgar still wreaking havoc coming to the Thunderer. He's going to try and bully these uh, bully these fire drakes now so they can't uh, be brought to bear on anything with those nasty flamethrowers. Um, so, yeah, here he goes. He's chasing him down. Look at his little dinosaur doing that little step. Rawr! Yep. Going to try and mash him up a bit. That's good. Temple Guard still going against these Slayers and 
Slayers and the Longbeards. Um, Slayers have a bonus against large. So they're not going to be doing terribly well against my infantry. This group of Saurus Warriors still going. Skink Chief still shooting in. Cold One Riders getting a nice charge into these Dwarf Warriors. And these Dwarf Warriors are all breaking with the pressure of the Saurus and the Pterodons. And um, now the Star Chamber Guardians who are just bullying Thorgrim over there. Basically routed his whole right flank. Uh, one group back here, you maybe forgot about them, like I forgot about the Salamanders. Krokgar back into the Thunderers. Just they're not getting a break from freaking Dinosaur Havoc. Look at him go, just rawr, 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 rawr. stupid, stupid dwarves. Stupid small hairy things. And now he's going to go right back, cycle right back into those Fire Drakes. Totally prevent those Fire Drakes from doing anything effective. He knows what's coming. He knows what's happening. He's trying to run. Oh, not again. Yes, again. I've just basically gone back and forth. Popping swiftness eventually will give myself a speed buff just to catch up with them and finish them off even faster. Here we go. You, you just don't learn your lesson, do you? Ah! <laughs> boom. Boom, boom, boom. And, okay, so still holding out these group of longbeards. Are they still in the fight? Barely holding on. Still not breaking just because they got that high leadership. Slayers and longbeards. going to be the toughest um, group here, but I've got that extra group of... Um, Saurus, um, Saurus that scared off those Dwarven Warriors coming in, surrounding the Slayers and grinding them down, and the Longbeards as well. Now this is bad. They're still going to get uh, Thunderers to bear. Um, bring the Thunderers to bear. That would be bad if he could do that, but I've got the Pterodons on them now just to keep them totally occupied with dinosaurs in their face instead of being able to fire. Manage to surround Thorgrim Gun Grudge Bear. I don't know if I'm going to kill him, but I'm sure I'm bullying him with all those troops. I think I pull off and go against... Um, Anything that's still, uh, st anything dwarven that's still fighting. Charging in here with the cold ones against the dwarf warriors. Ooh. Cold one riders, sorry, excuse me. Um, again, not the best trade for them, but they're just going to be overwhelmed now with the other infantry. It's amazing how they hold out. Like, dwarves are so stubborn. There's barely anything left. They're completely surrounded, but they'll still fight on. And this group's going to ch come charging in too. Like, whatever. Yeah. They're too stubborn, they are. So the Thunders are managing to get some shots into my Pterodons. I don't like that. Um, but uh, I still got a I still got a Krokgar and a Grimlock to bring down on them. Um, I think the Pterodons are maybe going to go after them in a second, too. So they're getting some shots in. The Thunder is through the bush. Not good. Want to shut those down as quickly as possible. But I've got waves of infantry coming in. Dwarf Warriors, small amount. Um, but they're not going to be able to stand up to this. This Claude. Uh, my Skink Chief kind of surrounded, but scaring off those... Yeah, you don't like my blowgun? Get out of here! Yeah! That's Skink Chief, man. I like him. Pterodons. Gyrocop, Gyrobomber tried to come back in, but the Pterodons are like, oh no you don't. Bullying them again. So it's just straight up dinosaur bullying here. Where is Krokgar? Krokgar, again, in the Thunder is popping a nice swift of it, so blowing the Thunderers around. I just use that offensively, just when I'm in them, just to blow up their formation and really scramble them charging downhill into the back of thunderers they just did not get a break from that big angry dinosaur um this still some dwarven warriors holding out the slayers they're going to be basically annihilated to the last model um as well as what's what's this what are these guys are these long beards can't even tell now they're gone though even the cannon crews got involved but yeah so that is how you can disrupt a uh, a larger army on a hill with just a selection of elite troops and cavalry let's take a look at the kill count who did the most work for me so Krokgar finally doing some decent work 105 kills good job Krokgar finally you're getting some prop you're getting used like you deserve to be the salamander 17 kills before they routed and I forgot about them so I'm still maybe I gotta rethink the salamanders um, they're useful. If I can remember to keep them involved, if I'd kept them involved, the whole game uh, might have been over quicker. But again, every time I seem to bring them, they seem to rout, and then I forget about them because uh, I guess get engaged with the cavalry and the infantry. So 115 on this group of Cold One Spear Riders. Well done, boys. 47 on these boys. Well done. 69 and 90 on the Pterodon Riders. That's what I like to see. 74 and 65 on the Temple Guard and the Star Chamber Guardians. 138, 116 on the Storus Warriors. So yeah, no more red chested skinks. Skinks for me, it's going to be Saurus Warriors with shields. Uh, just two groups. I think that that's more effective than three groups of Red Crested Skinks. Because those Red Crested Skinks would have been melted, I think, um, by uh, by missiles. But their shields, I think, really helped these Sauruses. They just had better staying power. So that was a really good game for me. Really exciting. Um, Punisher here. He did... Um, what did the most work? Slayers did the most work for him. But I think forcing him out of position... 
Um, charging him from all sides really disrupted his uh, his defensive capabilities, just kind of forced him to focus in multiple directions at once. And keeping on top of those thunders with Krokgar was uh, essential. Swiftness to Witzel was very useful in just laying on the damage and um, freeing Krokgar up to move around between range units in the back line. Um, just keeping them from firing into my infantry, letting my infantry do the work. Even though they were outnumbered, we, uh, we came away with a victory. So, that's that. 550 against 1,214, and it's a victory for the frickin' dinosaurs. Finally. Alright, it's for the boys, the boys, back home. It's your boy Benvolio. Keep it real.